Come here, Amber. Look. Welcome to uh, episode, I think it's 18. It's all about coilover shocks. Can you put 300, 300ZX coilover struts or shocks, whatever you want to call them, on a hard body? Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the, that's what this episode's about. Got these uh, max speed, whatever they are, max speeding rods. Pretty heavy duty, solid steel, aluminum top cap. So uh, I'm gonna try to put them on the front of the truck. So like and subscribe if you wanna follow along with the build. This is a Datsun 521 restoration. Thanks. Oh, that's the least of those directions. That's funny. Oh my god. They're all so These things are bigger than I thought. <clears throat> Looks so small on the internet. I just unscrewed the adjuster, the bottom part. This is the front of a 95 300ZX coilover. These are actually really nicely made. <clears throat> um, these shocks are huge though. But they all go through the bump stop, obviously, that needs to go. Man, are these gonna fit in here? I think I'm gonna have to modify them for control arms, unfortunately. Kinda predicted that, but uh man, these things are heavy. Actually a pretty good size. Looks like they'll fit the right dimensions. Just need to put a mount up here. That looks pretty good. I don't know how much adjustment I need, man. These things are heavy. Up and heavy duty. At least uh, 11 gauge. Cut that thing off. <clears throat> this bushing is kind of weird. I don't know what that size is. Oh my gosh, wait a second. Don't tell me that's the same size <laughs> as the... Uh, don't tell me that's the same size as the... Uh, the bolt for the torsion bars. Uh... I think I bought two of those. No way. <clears throat> That'd be too funny. If that's the same dimension. Uh, let's see if this one's uh, it's too big. I guess I could, I could cut that down. Uh, man alive. <laughs> Just the bottom part alone. It's like, these things are huge. They're way bigger than they look like on the internet. Oh. Oh, what have I got myself into? Oh my god. Wow, I did not expect how big these things are. They look so rinky dinky on the YouTube videos. <coughs> So this is the rear one. That would be the good for the rear of the truck. The mount is just slightly different. But uh, man, these things are beefy and heavy. So the shock I read there's just a replacement cartridge that's universal for any car. That's kind of cool. <coughs> so um, yeah, there's a ton of trouble in here. Oh boy. Cutting is how it begins. I don't know. These are the same size. I actually saw one YouTube video that these are 70.5 millimeter, which is actually bigger than a normal two inch spring. Definitely bigger. Let's see if I can get a new one. Alright, I just compressed the coil over. The full mount. That would be the position right there. This is a full droop. Maybe droop a little bit more. No, I think it's. Nah, that's not full droop, but close to it. Yeah, that fits pretty good. 
I just gotta get, oh my God, these things are heavy. I just gotta get this clearanced out, get rid of the frame thing, put another plate on there maybe, make them out here. If I just cut that and get rid of that bump stop, it will actually fit in there. I need to cut off this tab and cut off this goofy thing. I can reduce that bolt down. I think the factory Nissan torsion bar bolt will actually go in there. I think that's the dimension. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. There's one right there. They're all in there. Bolt. Uh, is there one loose on the other side? No. They're in the shed. But yeah. I don't know if I should do this now or I'll get this truck running first. This is going to be a lot of work. This may have to wait until the truck's running. Torsion bars. You may be going back on. <laughs> Alright. So I'm going to try to roll... The black letters. That was first attempt. Pretty messy. I don't know if I can maybe just paint them better, tape them off, let them dry, tape them off, and then repaint the white. Maybe I should have done that first, paint the black first, and the white second. I don't know if the black is supposed to be down along the edges or not. Anyway, it's definitely loud. I love it. Love it. Come back in 10 minutes to do another coat. Just screw around taking this apart. And believe it or not, it actually fits in there when you lower it. And I haven't cut out this big block yet or the bump stop. And this bigger coil spring. I had it moving a second ago. I guess I need to come back just to here. Look at that. No modifications at all. That's amazing. <laughs> Stupid brake posters right there. Wow. This may actually work. I can't shorten these shocks. And it needs to be lower, but then again, this is like drooped. Wow. This may be doable. Less work than I thought. I didn't even cut anything. And it fits in there. I wonder if I should move the shock over like an inch. Uh, to match up with the top, have it go straight up and down, offset. I may still be able to use the sway bar in that stock hole too. I don't know, I'm just kind of shocked that the shock fits. And I haven't removed any of this steel yet on this side. So, uh, look at that, look at that, there we go. Wow. Wow. These are bigger than the QA, QA1 shocks that I've seen people run on hard bodies. And I've seen on uh, 620. So, that eye is on the bottom. And I could lower this. I could cut all this out and have the mount on the bottom of the plate or something stupid. If I really needed to. So I would say I can't go up too much because <laughs> some idiot. Put a brake booster there. I got a battery on the other side. I can only go up about another half an inch. But to compensate for that eye, I could cut a hole in here and mount it to the bottom of the control arm or something stupid. But it does need a compress, so shoot. I think I need to mount this with a no spring pull droop. That's what I need to do. Get rid of the spring and just mount it like normal. That's what I gotta do. All right, the stock D21, D21 shock extended is almost 14 inches. These coilovers for a Z32 are about 15 inches at their smallest, their smallest. I was thinking I could just cut this down, but you can't really because there's a shock inside there. So originally I was thinking I'd just cut that in half and make it lower. But anyways, I didn't know how, I didn't even know how big they were. So these are about 15. About 15, and these are what, almost 14? It's only one inch longer. That's pretty damn long. Okay, so the first thing I did is I got rid of that big tab. I cut these rings off. They may be able to go back on, but too late now they're gone. And I removed the stock D21 lower shock mount. The hole was too small. Uh, it would have worked, except for it was too high. Remember, this shock is like an inch longer than it needs to be. 
gonna have more trouble. So it wouldn't hurt to move this thing down. But I got a problem. The problem I have is there's the stock shower, ah, shock tower. The, uh, the A-arm moves back as a caster, camera, caster. So in order to get the shock nice and straight, I'm gonna have to move the lower mount over a tickle. Kind of wants to be right where that shock was. So, oh, I loosen everything to get that in there. This needs to go down another inch, by the way. But it won't, even though it's all loose. So what I need to do is I need to cut this out, plate the bottom, and recess the shock into here. Maybe even just go right through the front. That'd be nice to draw one big long bolt right through the thing. Uh, I've got some tabs, but yeah, the first thing I definitely got to do, the shock wants to be right here. So we need to make this symmetrical. I need to notch this out so I can line up at the top. All right, come on. So I got the shock all level. Yeah. It's perfectly centered on the top. Just clears the, the bottom of the uh, opening. That's my brake booster thing. I just tacked on an old tab. I've got it on the outside of the frame. This clearance hole worked out really good. So now I've got, what is that, a 14 millimeter bolt? Yeah, it is. So I've got some old 14 millimeter bolts I found. The same thread pitches, the upper control arm bolts, ironically. I found a piece of half inch pipe or steel tube. It helps me reduce that 20 millimeter hole down to a 14 millimeter hole. I don't know how many bolts that big. I noticed that on some old uh, Versa lower control arms I just replaced on my son's Versa. Those bolts look like they were 20 millimeters, so but they were like really long, I think. So maybe the next time I go to the junkyard I'll get some old center Versa lower control arm bolts and put a 20 millimeter bolt in there, but I don't own any 20 millimeter bolts. I think that one's only an 18. The, uh, so anyways, I looked at my Frontier and it's like a 14, I think. It says it'll be strong enough. So cool, I got it in there, I got it positioned. Now I've got to figure out how to put in the other side mount. Uh, and then plate that back up, box the bottom. At least, yeah, I guess I got to do the other bottom mount next. And then we'll figure out the top. But I'm liking that. That's actually the stock location full droop, I think. And I got the stock location on the arm. Sway bar is going to be interesting. I don't know if it's going to clear here. I may have to move it back. I don't know. But uh, we'll work around the shock. Alright, here's the rack all done. Going back in the truck. Just painted it. Okay, so I need an inch and a quarter, right, from the top of this stud, the top of this plate, for my upper mount. So I've set the uh, truck full droop, got it bolted on the bottom, fully compressed, the lowest setting, which is just perfect because it's just enough for me to get the nut over the top because this side I have clearance issues, the other side not so much. I screwed that nut all the way down when it bottoms out. That's pretty much the same. It's like an eighth of an inch out, but it's close enough. So I made a back plate the same height. So now I can put another plate across here. And that should be correct, right? Put a plate across here, and then that'll be the, the mount. Ironically, it's going to hit the cab here. So I'm going to have to cut the body again just a little bit. I can have a nice square with your rectangular mount. Check this out on the other side. I haven't even bolted this in yet. I made a plate. I'm using the holes of the, of the control arm. And it's not, I need to grind some of those walls flat so it sits flush. I can actually bolt that on, take it on and off before I finally weld it. Make sure everything's in the right place, cycle suspension, whatnot. Uh, I think this is going to work. I made one for the other side as well. In the shed. I just got to cut the bottom, just got a little wavy thing. I got some ideas on how to reinforce it, but come back to that. So now I got to make the top plate with three holes. That's going to be fun. All right, so I just had to notch a little bit more of my fender. 
a little bit more away because I made two plates for the uh, what do you call this thing? Shock tower. It's gonna be a bolt on for a while until I finalize the plan, but I just mucked. Alright, let's do this easy way. Okay, so now we got the shock tower bolted on temporarily. The plan is to add some steel here, but we'll get to that later. So I just grinded this down nice and flush. My little upper controller mount. Now it's becoming part of my coil mount. So I already got the top plate made, drilled. It's probably on the floor down there somewhere on the other side of this truck. Put that back on and we can actually tack it together, I think. Put the shock back on, then I'll add on sides and reinforcements later. But basically, the shock tower is just going to be one vertical and one horizontal for now. And it's going to be a bolt on to recycle the suspension. So here's the top of the shock tower. I think it's six by five, and uh, it's got a big hole in the middle. Oh, I just got to put the shock back on. Got to go right there. Put this back together again. We can tack it up. There you go, just weld it on the top plate, the vertical to the horizontal, on my shock cover. This was 89 degrees. Well, it was actually 89 degrees at ride height. It's full of droop right now. So, I'm loving that. It looks really good. I can center this butter mount where I need to. Get that nice and straight that way. Currently 87 this way. It's weird it was 89 earlier, but um, yeah, so now i got to make some gussets. I think that is the next step, and then I'll take this, unbolt this thing. Yeah, it's still a bolt-on. When I weld on the gussets, I was thinking of going all the way the whole length. Don't have much room there. So I could actually do thicker steel. I don't know, we'll figure that out. Okay, so here it is, it's stock. Got a full droop, shock's bottomed out. Don't have the bump stop in here, but full travel. Basically bottoms out on the control down here, the stock place before it does up here, but this, you know, remember that's gonna be there. So basically the bottom out the same place. That's kind of like stock height, stock right height. So if I want to lower the truck more, I can Z the lower control arm or do drop spindles, or I can move the tower up now and uh, cut the bump stop or relocate the bump stop. I'm trying to decide what to do. I could easily move it up another half an inch, another inch on this side without hitting my booster. So uh, I need to think about this. All right, so here's my lower mount. End up cutting this off, moving it up. So it's a 20 millimeter hole. I'm stepping it down with this spacer. Here's what it looks like after it's all cut off. I still may remove this bone stop one day, but for now, see the original shock tower underneath, my new control arm tower on top of it, and the shock tower bolt on top, piece of two inch plate, make it all look like it never even happened. All right, so now here goes the other side, I'm gonna do the right side. So I got my bottom mount all figured out. I added a couple pieces of steel and a nut. Uh, so now uh, all I'm going to do is I got my tar, slide up like that, I'm going to hold it there, I'm going to tack weld it, and then I'm going to add on that triangle. Uh, put my helmet on. Just changed my welding wire and ran out of 25. Back to 35. Can't see what I'm doing. 
Alright. Pull the back of the one. Perfect. Gloves on. Didn't have my real glove on. And on my plastic gloves. I think I got it though. It looks perfect. What am I doing? On the inside and outside? Oh. Well, uh, jump the gun as normal. I made these uh, bolt in so I could remove them and weld them from the inside and everything, but I went ahead and welded these ribs on. And so I went ahead and welded down the sides and down the frame. So uh, I'm real happy with that. The main reason I, I was going to add a piece of flat stock on here, but there's not a lot of room with the upper control arm joints right here. And they get in the way here, but it, you could do it. You could put like a one inch or inch and a half st strip right here. But the reason uh, I still could do that. The reason I didn't want to do that is that you still be connecting down to this top plate. And I've already removed all the steel off the front. And I really want to get into this thick steel. This is like 3 16th. It's the thickest frame part there is. So my idea was connect this bar down to that I'm going to put another piece of thick steel right here to connect these together. That way all the way of the truck is getting transferred down to this steel. That's the theory anyways. If the truck falls off, the towers break off, well no, bad idea. But uh, yeah, still got add the triangles to the fronts. But uh, coming along, probably will hold the weight of the truck now. Yeah, because all the weight of the truck was held here before with the torsion bars. So now I'm moving into the top of the rail. This is like the third time I've done this kind of thing. Uh, in the past, when I did my solid axle swap coilovers, I did bolt-on coil buckets. And I kind of grabbed the outside of the frame on the top of the frame. And uh, it does bend the frame a little bit. You really should put a cross brace, but to keep the frame from twisting. This is my official rear triangle. I think the front one is slightly different it should be technically it should be the same but um i'll trim it a little bit i think there was like an eighth of an inch difference between the front and the back so i made two for the backs now i just gotta make two more of these for the front and i may put a piece of steel across here later to clean it up and i may put a piece of steel around the front maybe not my original idea was to take the coal towers off and bolt them maybe cut a big circle. I actually marked it <laughs> a couple days ago so I could do that. But it changed my mind because if I get new coal over three years from now or something, and they're a different shape on the top, 
because I don't know what the factory one is. I think they are similar shape. Anyways, I, I think I'll keep it rectangle that way. I can fit any kind of coal over mount in there. That makes sense. Alright, so I got the final triangles cut and welded in today. So the coal buckets are they're probably strong enough now to hold the weight of the truck, but they're not done. I'm going to add something on the top, and I wanted to add something down the side to reinforce this seam here to prevent it from buckling. I've got a couple ideas there. There's not much room. There's only an eighth of an inch because of the upper control arm bolts, but I could probably put a rib right down here. i got to put it all back together and see how much space i got left, but I think it's strong enough for now. I just installed the coil spring. Let's see, let me turn this off. Okay, so I just installed the coil spring assembly for the first time. Completely assembled. Put it back together. Oh, 